find myself in a happy coincidence. Uh, I inherited some scrap copper pipe from a neighbor who was doing a remodel, and I have need of a two meter amateur radio antenna for a contest this evening. So today, we're gonna build a J-pole. Well, one of the joys of this antenna is that it is dirt simple to make, assuming that you have ever soldered any copper, or pretty much anything before in your life. There are lots of good calculators online for what size to make the various pieces of a J-pole style antenna. I'll put a link to the one that I used in the description for the video. There's only two things you need to know to plug into one of these calculators. Uh, one is the frequency that you want the antenna to be optimal for. And the other is what's called the velocity factor of the material you're making the antenna from. In my case, I'm custom building this specifically for a two meter simplex contest that's going on this evening. So I put in 146.5 megahertz as my frequency to tune for. And the velocity factor sounds complicated, but it's really nothing more than uh, what percentage of the theoretical speed of light does electricity travel in your material. Copper is a really good conductor, so the default of 0.96 works pretty well. That means for my antenna that I need a quarter wave matching section that is 49.1 centimeters long. And yes, this is probably gonna come out in metric because everything in radio is. And then for my long section, I need 147.4 centimeters of length. So the good news is that I have lots of choices in this uh, odd shape in my scrap to come up with the little bit less than 50 that I need for the quarter wave. But I don't have any pieces in here that are long enough to by themselves be the, the half wave tall section. Not to worry. I have here a coupler and as long as we take the length into consideration, the fact that we have a slightly larger diameter for this little piece and a couple more solder joints isn't going to hurt a thing. Uh, feel free to splice copper together to make the pieces if you need to. Even though my short section, my quarter wave matching stub is supposed to be 49.1 centimeters, I'm gonna cut it right here at 40. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a coupler in there and then make the rest of it a second piece of rod. I'm gonna do that so that I have the easy ability to essentially just insert and remove that top section of the matching stub as a way to tune the antenna. And I have the first two halves of my upright sections here, and then I have the bottom all prepped and, and ready to be soldered, but I'm not quite ready to put the heat to it. It's pretty important that the two uprights are in fact parallel. So take your time, bust out your tape, and make sure that you have these things, you know, parallel, as close as you can get them anyway, before you solder that bottom joint. Now it's copper, it will bend a little bit once it's stuck together with the solder, uh, but it's better to get it right at this point. Okay, here's the rest of my quarter wave matching stub. If I slide that in there and bottom it out, I should have 49.1 centimeters on this leg. I'll be able to make this leg a little bit longer by sliding this thing out if I need to. That will tune the antenna down lower, uh, which in this case is probably the direction I wanna go as the simplex frequencies are all at the bottom of the two meter band. Okay, the rest of my top long section here, I know exactly how long I want that to be. That's the 147.4 centimeters. Um, so in theory, I could cut this and solder it in, but that assumes that I know to the millimeter, you know, how far in this thing is gonna go when I solder it and that it's not gonna expand or contract. So I'm gonna do it in the other order. I'm gonna solder this in here first and then I'll cut it to length. I need a piece of solid copper coming out of the middle of my connector. Heating up the copper and letting the heat flow up into the connector works great. Okay, got all the pieces done, so it's time to cobble this thing together and figure out where on the copper J section it, we are gonna attach the connector for the coax. I have it held on there right now with some plastic spring clamps, which aren't the best attachment ever, uh, but the plastic clamps don't interfere with the RF signal pattern. It's good enough for testing and it's an easy way for me to be able to move that connection point up and down the antenna until we find the sweet spot. What's the sweet spot? Well, the sweet spot is where we get the lowest SWR, standing wave ratio measurement, when we transmit a signal into the antenna. All right, up here in the corner, I have a handy GoPro cam set up on the SWR meter. 
It's the very, very bottom scale on the meter where the black region starts at zero and goes up to 1.5. A perfect antenna has an SWR of one to one, meaning 100% of the power that goes to the antenna leaves the antenna. So let's key up and do a test on both ends of the amateur two meter band. That's what this is tuned for and see what kind of deflection we get on this needle. Two things about a test like this. Uh, one, even though you're testing, you do need to do ID to stay legal. And two, always keep your radio on the lowest power available, uh, just in case you hit some sort of a crazy high SWR. Maybe it's a bad connection. Maybe you hooked up to the wrong antenna, who knows? But uh, you don't want five watts of power coming back at the amp in your radio. It's a good way to end up with a new radio. For the first test, I'm gonna start at the bottom of the ham band that's 144 megahertz. This is N3 NWV antenna testing. Okay, that is a pretty incredibly good result. That is uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a one-to-one -one match. Let's shoot on up to the other end of the band, 147.999 whatever um, megahertz and see how it looks up there. This is N3 NWV antenna testing. Okay, once again, the performance is spectacularly good up there. I, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And I pretty much expected that to be spot on because as I mentioned before, the physics of these antennas are pretty well known. And so the online calculator told me where my 50 ohm feed point was gonna be. And sure enough, it's spot on. But if for whatever reason, you're not getting that good of a match out of this kind of antenna, not to fret, this is why we left the connector mobile for the testing. Just move your attachment point up and down the antenna, repeating your test until you find the spot where you have a really, really good match. Once you find that spot, you can permanently mount the connector. I used a flat piece of copper and just drilled a hole. Okay, well, as you can see, we have made a transition. The antenna is uh, up in the air using duct tape. What else would you use? What's it attached to? A tractor. What else would you use? Well, I hold in my hand a list of amateur radio repeaters in increasing distance from the home base here. I'm going to uh, skip a few down the list here. Let's go up to about the 15 mile range, see if we can hit a repeater that is uh, off in the east. W3 WGM, it's November 3, November Whiskey Victor. I'm out here uh, trying out a brand new J pole, just wondering how well I'm making it into the repeater. Hey, we're full of quieting. No problem whatsoever. Signal's fine. Then for Calling 14 miles with one watt, you're doing great. So I've been out here playing with this thing this morning, and I think I've found what uh, is going to be about the limits of what I'm going to be able to work here in this terrain. Uh, this particular repeater, K3PSP, is 51 and change miles from here. So I'm going to make one more call here on voice, see if I can get someone to respond, and if not, I'll uh, do the 411 thing so you can at least hear that we are, in fact, talking to this bugger. Now, to be fair, I'm no longer on one watt. We're at 50 miles. I've cranked this thing up to full power, which is a seven watt output. Let's see what happens. This is November 3, November Whiskey Victor, calling for anyone with a signal report from north of Zelianople, PA. Uh, Zelianople station, uh, November 3, Tango, India, Romeo, but what's, uh, I'm here in Washington. You, you're a good, good solid copy on the machine, just a little bit of static, just very small, but very copyable, okay? So there you go, 50 miles on five watts. Not bad using uh, the neighbor's old plumbing for an antenna. As always, questions or comments, leave them below. And while you're there, think about hitting that subscribe button. And for those of you who are worried about all the weirdness on the channel lately, uh, stay tuned, because next week it is back to woodworking. In the meantime, y'all stay safe, YouTube.